Quantum Conversations, your portal to the inner realms. Access infinite possibilities, infinite mastery, and infinite love. Mind-expanding, heart-opening conversations with some of the greatest spiritual teachers, luminaries, and healers of today's world. Usher in new earth by living in your sacred heart. Quantum Conversations is brought to you by AcousticHealth.com, home of music from the universe, online healing retreats, and this program. Claim your free registration to daily shows at AcousticHealth.com. AcousticHealth.com, your portal to the inner realms. Our program starts shortly. Welcome to another Quantum Conversation, brought to you by AcousticHealth.com. I'm Loren Gailey, and I invite you to sit back as we enter the Quantum Realm, that space of the greater part of you. It is your connection to infinite possibilities, infinite potential, and infinite mastery. And welcome to today's episode of Quantum Conversations where we are talking about the great awakening that is underway. And what does that mean to awaken? It really means to step into the truth of who you are and actually the matrix that we have been hypnotized by. And so we learn to step away from the old matrix here onto new earth as well. This is truly living from the heart and living from a place of empowerment. And my guest today is here to share that while so many people are awakening and we can sense a quickening in the great shift that's underway, there's also what's known as a rapid awakening or a spontaneous awakening. We're going to hear the story of Maria Benthancourt and how she herself managed to navigate through this great awakening. Maria, welcome to Quantum hey. Conversations. Hi, Lauren. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much. What a blessing. <laughs> what a blessing. Thank you so much for joining us. This mm-hmm. is a fascinating conversation. And I think the best way to express it for our community is to have you share your story. And what I love about this is that it really, you know, while we've seen this great shift start really with the harmonic convergence in 1987, Mm -hmm. there was a big swell in 2010, 2011, 2012. Actually, we're still in that window and you yes. you fit right in there. Yours was on in August of 2011. Tell us what happened. Um, well, up until then, I was uh, I, I'm, I'm 55. I'm going to be 55 this year. So what was that? 47. <laughs> and um, I was actually it was a Thursday. I was uh, living in the, with a person that was my partner at the time. They are no longer in my life. Uh, but I was actually reaching for a glass of water in the kitchen. And, and I had been writing. I've always been a writer. And I had just finished writing a thank you to my adoptive mother for the fact that she loved me and had given me life and for my adoptive father. Back then, I was still working through that, my own personal things. And actually, August 25th, 2011, was what I can, looking back on it now, eight years later, that was probably the happiest I'd ever been up to then in my life, other than having my babies and, you know, marrying um, two men that I was deeply in love with and then, you know, that kind of thing. But uh, it really was, and, and I did die. And I understand how people say, you know, through every, there's always a common thread as truth is singular. And people always say, you know, that, uh, well, you have to die to be reborn. 
And it's, it's exactly what it is. Uh, it's being reborn yourself into the aspect of you that you didn't know you had. Um, and so I was reaching for a glass of water. I was very, very thirsty. I was already probably in my light body process. And as I reached for the glass of water, I felt what I can best describe as a like a thin thread, like a thin, like a flowing thread of light that went mm-hmm. through me, came through my crown, through the top of my head, um, and it shot through me. And I remember instantly stopping, and my thought was, I feel light. It was like I was having an internal conversation with myself, and it was like, I feel light. And then I remember thinking, but not light as in heavy or, you know, from weight. It was almost as if a light switch had been turned inside of me, like you would flip on a light. That's exactly how it was. And as soon as that thought hit my mind, immediately I got hit, and I did get hit, by this feeling of bliss and love, unconditional love that I really, in truth, had never, ever felt in my life. I was so loved in that when that light went through me, it literally, I lost, I I literally went on the ground and sat down because I was in such a state of bliss. And I remember it was unconditional love, and I remember thinking, this is bliss. And then thinking, oh, my goodness, I had no idea. Um, and then the next thing that happened is, you know, after I thought about the light, my first thought was, oh, I'm having, you know, these feelings. And because I uh, have a degree in psychology I, and I've always been involved with the brain, my first thought was, I have a brain tumor. I thought, I have a brain tumor and something in my head is touching something else in my head and is giving me these feelings of unconditional love. And the minute I thought that to myself, it was like it didn't resonate. It just wasn't. It was like, you know, one of those where you go, nah, maybe. And so it was like I put it in a box, like a Christmas box, that feeling. And I set it aside and I thought, I got to keep looking, you know. I, I, what's going on with me? What's going on with me? I gotta, that in it, but just in case. Mm-hmm. So then the next thought. See how the ego had, comes oh, in? Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Right? The ego mm-hmm. comes in to take you there. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, and not only that, Lauren, but but the beautiful part is you as that's tied to the ego is the fact that if I had not resonated to the fact that I didn't have a brain tumor, then manif- I would have manifested instantly a brain tumor because it was that I released the fear that the truth came in, and therefore the fear or the brain tumor, so to speak, no longer held any power over me. It was no longer in my reality; it could no longer touch me. Mm-hmm. But it was. It, it was like a combination of, of my whole life of just following. I've always been highly intuitive and always been gifted, and that got shut down for me when I was young. But um, I had that first feeling, and, and that wasn't it. But you're right. The ego pops right up there, right? <laughs> What's up? What's going on? Mm-hmm. Um, my second thought after that was I'd gone crazy. Mm-hmm. I thought I've gone crazy because now here is is the funny part. Ha <laughs> ha! I was what I call a sleeper in the matrix. That means I had been hearing things, seeing things. I've been having all these awakening symptoms, but I didn't know. I didn't know what they were. So I just had told you know, and even my kids and all the people that love me and my friends. I used to have a huge circle back then. You know, they were like a. You know, you're just hearing things. You're crazy. And I was always having, like, intuitive stuff. So, you know, it's kind of like I was a freaky-deaky anyways. But it really, really shook me up. And I was like, I've gone crazy. This is what crazy is. And then my next thought was, well, if this is crazy, this is pretty good. Um, this love and bliss is going gonna, gonna to be just fine. And I even remember thinking, I'm just going to tell my kids to just put me in a corner someplace and just make sure I'm happy and take care of me, you know. But again, <laughs> that insanity did not resonate. And I said, no, that's not it. And it was like I took that aside and I put it just like with my other Christmas box. I, and then the minute that I released that second fear of insanity, um, it was like what had been a thin thread of light going through me that had just instantly uh, happened. 
grew within me to what I can best describe as a fiber optic cable. So it's kind of like inside of me, that cable, that light, it grew. And I, and I almost could, like if the, I had drawn myself, I would have been a little, a little, you know, head, a little stick figure drawn in white because I was filled with white. I could, I, I remember I could see it and, and it filled me and instantly in that moment, um, I saw my life. And I've had a very, I had as a childhood, I've been, um, I've had a horrific life. Um, and, uh, and so all my life, I'd always thought of my life as just a horrific, horrible person's life. Somebody that had done horrible things and that's why all the horrible things had happened to me. And so, but on this day, when I saw my life, it was like all those puzzle pieces had come together. And my life was beautiful. And, um, oh, by the way, if I accidentally say a cuss word, I am so apologetic, but I sometimes just, um, so I don't mean to in any way offend, please beat me. Okay, but, that's um, all right. <laughs> okay, I'm sure you've heard it before. Um, <laughs> but I remember when all that kind of grew like that, um, and I felt this, I remember that, that I saw my life and I thought, oh, my God, it's beautiful what's happened to my life. And um, and I saw my life, and it was the most beautiful thing, and I just felt such joy, um, and I, I felt such love for my mother and my father and my children. I saw everything from such a different perspective, and everything just made perfect sense. Um, and then the next thing that happened is when all that happened, and I was just in such gratefulness, um, it was like um, all of a sudden my my like as if my head had two little doors, kind of like you know those door elevator those elevators that have in like in New York City that come up from the ground and they open up two little steel doors. The mm-hmm. Yeah, you know exactly. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, it was like my crown, the top of my head was like two little hinged doors, and it was like. It was really slow and creaky and opening. It was like, (laughs) and my mind opened up, and I received what I call my first download. And in that moment, I understood. I understood quantum physics, quantum mechanics, a love, how to manifest sound in the beginning. I understood. I understood who I was. I I remembered who I was. I understood all about me, um, and it just all came down. It was also at that moment that I was completely taking out of space and, and time, and I haven't had any sense of time since that date, and I've been functioning outside of time um, and quantum jumping and doing global grid work for the last eight years. So in that moment, all that information came down, and I just understood. And I remember, I remember thinking, Oh, it's so simple. It was like one of those moments. Um, and then right after that, after I understood, then I understood why I was here. I understood my soul's purpose. I was meant to be born to bring in a new way of healing, a new, a new way where, you know, new healing centers or whatever, whatever it is, it was going to be brand new. And then I I got a lot of more, a lot more different um, personal information about myself and about what I needed to do and what was coming for me. Um, and uh, it it just was it, I remembered that it it all of a sudden it stopped and I couldn't think of anything. I just I couldn't I didn't have anybody that even knew. The only thing I did was I called uh, a person that ha- was um, somebody that was the sister of, of who I was with at the time who was an acupuncturist. And we had in the past talked about chakras. And she had tried to explain that to me, and I was like, what, what? You know, and I was like, I didn't know there were chemtrails. I didn't know there were GMOs. I didn't know. I didn't know about I didn't know about any of it. I was deep asleep in the matrix. Um and so uh, I called her, and I was like, oh, my God, you know, I just had this, you know, I'm standing in the kitchen, and the light went through me. And, of course, I had, you know, verbal diarrhea because my throat chakra had cleared. So I told her, like, everything that happened, right? And right after I finished, it was like silence on the other side. 
and I remember thinking, oh, boy, you know, she's going to be calling the paddy wagon. And I even thought, I better go unlock the front door because I wouldn't want them to break the glass. Um, and this is all happening in that long silence. And then all of a sudden she goes, oh, my God, you have just experienced a spontaneous spiritual awakening, a, a kundalini awakening. And, and she, she goes, you, you, you basically did what I've been trying to do all my life. And um, I was like, uh, cuss word, cuss word, cuss word, is that? Because I didn't even know what a spontaneous spiritual awakening, I didn't even know we could have spiritual awakenings. I didn't know anything. I didn't know. Yeah, I never meditated a day in my life. I had no idea that world existed at all. They, they, so um, from then on, after that conversation, I began the next three days of extreme awakening symptoms. And have for the last eight years, I, it catalyzed my star seed awakening. I am an incarnate soul. This is my first rodeo. There's a reincarnation process. There's an incarnation process. Everybody's got to get into the game somehow. Um, and so I, since then, remembered that I am an Arcturian Andromedan star seed. Um, I am, uh, have been doing grid work. I, you know, have a website. I've, I have been for years writing about from a, from an Arcturian perspective and an Andromedan perspective, um, the shift specifically with grids. Um, you know, because that is, I am, a, a, I'm here for grid work. Um, and so that is um, how it started. I had to clear incredibly between August 25th of 2011 to the 11-11-11 portal. And by then, I already was anchoring and preparing because, you know, those were huge portals. Um, that were, you know, as the sun was beginning to awaken uh, and become its active cycle. And so by 11-11, I had uh, already downloaded enough information, and my first global service was uh, when I was called to Quito, Peru, the following uh, year for the 12th 12, 12 passage, the 1221 passage. Mm. That was my first global service. So it took me between August to the following December, for what, like, whatever months that is, to prepare myself for global grid work. Um, and then I ended up there, and then from there I went to, from Quito, Peru, I wrote about it. Um, and that kind of, by then I was already writing on lightworkers.org. I started writing with them like, like maybe a week after I had my awakening, and in fact, I found them. Um, and I, uh, my first, my first uh, post was, I was such a newbie. I had no idea. I was all kittens, fluffies, and puppies. I posted, we are the light of the world from YouTube as my first lightworkers.org, uh, post or blog with the video, you know, like uh, Christmas and more in, in August. But I was just so, you know, I was, I was, um, kind of like, think of it complete, an opposite, Upside down pyramid. So it's like, it's that game where, you know, you go to the fair and you hit that dongy thing with a big hammer and it goes up and it rings the bell and it goes ding. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, I was a ding. So I literally <laughs> flew out of the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. I flew all the way out into the void. Um, into the third, what I call the thirteenth, because that's how I understand it. You know, we all develop our own language, but um, and then I had to work my way back down from there, and literally it has taken me eight years to anchor back into the dimension of where where my life used to be, even though that life is gone because you know it's we die when we have an awakening, we really die without dying, and we have to remember that we are never releasing the love, but we are releasing the dysfunction from the from the timeline from the life so um, yeah, pretty crazy, not your normal thing, but, you know, we don't duplicate and everybody has a different way of doing it. But when mother wakes you, like she woke me, and when father grabs you, you know, it's like the universe grabs you by the neck, shakes you and throws you with great force on the other side of the room, and you have no idea what's going on because you are 
I was I uh, had to be completely uh, a, a hermit, absolute, 100%, to be able to learn who I was from an energetic standpoint and discern my intuitiveness so that I can then uh, improve my empath- empathic skills and feel outside of me because I'm a grid worker and, you know, that's, that I was being prepared for energy reports and all that kind of stuff. So I'm more of a, I'm actually, uh, uh, my hobby is quantum physics and my specifics is teleportation. I've been working on that for eight years and Tesla and Einstein and quantum stuff. Um, it's like okay. my, my thing now. Yeah, Your please, thing please. now. Have, yes. Yeah. Well, quantum is only going to be uh, a, a more popular topic in the mainstream because mm-hmm. it is really uh, the science behind all of this spirituality. It's what the great sages have been teaching yeah. for eons. So what I love there, Maria, is that I... And I was just having this conversation with someone earlier today, how we all are guided and all of us even listening to this program, we are all around the world and yet we're weaving light. You mm-hmm. were in Peru during that 12, 21, 12 gateway. Oh, yes. And so was mm-hmm. I. That was beautiful. Amazing. Oh, my God. Lots of people were doing grid work during that, the 11, 11, 11, yes, and the 12, 12, 12, so that is so fascinating, and I know that we can all look back at that time, and we'd be like, wow, we were all doing this work, so I love that you are... None of us knew it, too, because we were so isolated, and so protected, because, you know, I mean, it doesn't change that as... um, as now the quickening begins, you know, and, and we have all our brothers and sisters that are awakening. And, and I only speak of the heart collective because the bifurcation, you know, has occurred. And so, you know, there's no, everybody's doing their own thing. Um, and so, uh, but the heart collective is, it's beginning the quickening. And so it's a fair step. Everybody's in a different place. But one thing that they are really starting to understand is that there are things that go bump in the night and that are invisible, and that simply because we can't see them or because science can't prove it doesn't mean that that doesn't exist. Well, welcome to the fourth dimension. The earth has skipped and quickened right into the fourth dimensional uh, consciousness because everybody was so busy trying to think of getting to the fifth, they didn't realize, well, we still have the fourth. <laughs> we still have to quickly work through that, but with our quantum tools and with the forerunners, and um, I'm a volunteer, I'm a walk-in volunteer. Um, with those that have done, and of course, you know, everybody knows, eventually figures out who they are and why they're here. Um, those of us that have done that forerunner work, you know, we're seeing it, the, the energetic bridges to the fifth by the heart collective, they're all built. So that's the beauty of it. All they have to do is follow their heart, shine their life, and, and pray. Pray their booty off. And if they mm-hmm. can't do, if they can't follow their heart, and if they can't shine their light, then they can pray their booty off. Because either way, you know, you're, you're a believer or you're not. And it doesn't matter if you only believe zero, zero, and, you know, tiny, itty, bitty, Minus, you know, one. That, that EDB one tips you over the 50% duality. And so all you have, now you, you cruise through the fourth, um, whichever way you wish to do so as you experience this new earth. And by, you know, with no fear whatsoever that when all is said and done and you're gonna go to the last fantastic, you're coming out of here at the fifth or greater. So depending on where you land your personal ascension time. So, you know, we are quantum because all of us are, you know, our our heavens on earth or our heaven, or, you know, on heaven or whatever you want to call it, we're all different dimensions, different levels of consciousness, different rainbows, different colors, different beautiful individuals, just beautiful souls and, and aspects of our spark and our creator you know, here to, you know, here really to break things. And, and if you think about it, we're here to figure out how to die because we're eternal. So, so you know, I mean, I always think of, of how if, if you begin to, to look at everything from the other side 
instead of looking at being here to live, we are always alive. We are here to figure out the perfect death. Because then, um, that is the, because otherwise we're eternal and we wouldn't be able to have physicality. So if you, it, it's easier to think of death as your friend and to use it as, and control it in a way or make it, you know, your quantum tool, um, by, and, and overcoming that fear by realizing that you don't have to have those that control the matrix that are malevolent or that are not, you know, where we need to be in, in resonance, cognitive resonance. You don't have to worry about any of that because um, we are all in, encapsulated in, in our eternal force right now, the, the planet. Um, and so all of, we just have time. And so what we're all going to do that have chosen to anchor to the fifth, to the fifth, to the unity consciousness, uh, the law of one, you know, the fact that we're here to, to create and, um, and to create an, uh, everything new in ascen- in ascension, um, all of us are, are in all different dimensions. But we go down to the lower aspects of the third and the fourth to answer prayers. So we really all are learning to be, first we have to, you know, find our timeline that is our, our heaven and earth timeline where we will be the true creator of what we were born to create. And that's how we help the earth. Um, and then once we we can align to our timeline and we begin to reach what I call quantum stasis, uh, which is, you know, all of us are great jumpers, but we're not so good at landing <laughs> because we're just learning how to be multidimensional and to stick into a timeline. When we quantum jump into time and space, you know, the, the grids involved in the creation and the secret geometry and the holographic aspect of it, you know, everything has to work together. And so it's just like manifesting. We all manifest. We just don't know where we put it. Did we put it in yesterday? Did we put it 10 days from now? Did we put it 100 years from now? Because we're learning. It's a tool. Um and and so that's all, that's exactly how it's happening. But we're really, I feel, all training to answer prayers. And we don't have to, we don't have to travel the world and do grid work and go to, to all these places. We can sit at home and answer prayers. Um, and, and that might very well be, um, you know, the, the calling of so many, because that's the beauty of it. We are now all following our heart, and when you follow your heart, you hear your soul calling. And when you're connected to your soul, you're connected to the earth soul, to what I call the, the mother earth, and the father, the cosmic father is, is what I, I really align to as God the Father. That feels good to me. Even though, um, I don't, I'm not religious, but, you know, to me, the essence of, a, a, ben, a benevolent father God goes well with my my uh, relationship with my Mother Earth. You know what I mean? Like Father Father God to me in many ways is is space. It's what's around the Earth. You know, it's it's all of that combined. So many things. But uh, we're trying to find new language of light. But um, so I really pray for both, and I know that we're going to be answering. Um, we're all answering prayers, and some of us are here to answer human prayers, and some of us are here to answer kittens and puppies and um, rainbows, and you know. And then some of us are here for unicorns and mermaids. It, it, it's multidimensional. That's why we've gone Q. Well, quantum. It's not just one dimensional anymore. You don't have to live the third dimension or live the fourth dimension. You live in your heaven, and then you go and way down with all your spiritual tools and your quantum tools to the other timelines, quantum jumping and descending, so that you can answer the prayers that you are doing that day because you've heard the call from your heart. And I guess we're all angels, guardian angels in training right now, um, and that's the quickening. Everybody's awakening to their new jobs. Um, and it's 
it's I see it all around me, the stuff that I hear out on stores and what people are talking about, you know, you're like, whoa, yes. So it's <laughs> yes. a wonderful, wonderful time right well, now. And, you know, we have been persecuted and, and just shut down so much. And we, our souls are tired. And um, that's one of the reasons why I love what I do, you know, at Transcending Your Past, because it's post-awakening soul trauma. Our trauma is, our souls are traumatized when we awaken, you know, and we were under the illusion, and then all of a sudden we see things, you know. Um, it's I, When I found out about fluoride and how I've given my children fluoride, I mean, I cried for three weeks. Yeah, and vaccination. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, yeah. I guess the first symptom of awakening is anger, a lot of anger, right? You could be like, what the, what in the world? But um, yeah. then, then we work through it, and and I love what you said there about multi-dimensional living, and mm-hmm. and it's simply living in the heart. And mm-hmm. when you say uh, that you answer prayers, find your heaven on earth, and answer prayers, mm-hmm. um, and and align to our own timeline. This is what you help your clients do. And so yes. in, in personal sessions, you're actually helping to collapse old timelines and anchor to the Ascension timeline. Uh, we mm-hmm. can take a few callers and some questions on yes. that. But what sure. does that mean, really, to align to the Ascension timeline? Okay, so so I can only, of course, uh, Lauren, ex- express for my awakening that happened eight years ago. So remember before that I was like Woody Allen, a sleeper, right? So I my my I've only literally if you wish to think of it that way, I've, I've been born I've been living eight years. This this me. Um this soul that is now awake and conscious because awakening is awakening to the realities of the third dimension. The third dimension functions and is set up by the seven hermetic principles. And so the mystic arts, that's why they've been kept from us, that, you know, as to how it works. So, you know, it's kind of funny because if you are multidimensional and you are working in the third dimension, then you have to work under the rules of the seven hermetic principles. You can't go in there like a bull, China, a, a bull in a china cabinet or not, a, yeah, or a store. <laughs> I don't know how you're going to get a bull in a china cabinet, but you're not on that. Um, but, you know, so we, we ourselves, so we have to align to the dimension. So dimensions don't align for us. So we have to understand what the third dimension does and what the fourth dimension does. Because the third dimension, to me, the way I express it is, to me, is the dimension of time. So it's linear. And so the third dimensional rules of how to do your, your seven chakra, you know, the, the, the third dimensional chakra system, to activate that and to go help those that are activating that, you can't go down there as it's coming down from your 11th dimensional sacred space and plop into a third dimensional world. You'll kill them. You'll catalyst them. It's too much. Our energy, we have to take responsibility for the fact that as we become conscious and begin global grid work in the fifth dimension, our energy so intense. We will catalyst everything to everything, everyone, every situation, everything we put thought to, basically to 100% heaven or 100% hell. Because neutrality in today's new earth is no longer allowed. Passivity. So if you if you see something and you do nothing about it in the third dimension, it used to be that that was okay. Except now it isn't. That is, in a way, I don't want to say counted against you, but it 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 puts you at a different level of service. Does that make sense? It makes you you're you're holding your space at another mate in another grid, not in the five D grid. So the third dimension follows all the hollow the 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 the, the, the rules of the seven. Hermetic principles, and of course, the, that can get you in a lot of trouble because what you resist persists in the third dimension. 
That's third dimensional loop. In the fourth dimension, we follow quantum mechanics, quantum jumping. We understand about string theory. In the fourth dimension, it follows quantum mechanics, quantum rules. Well, things pop in and out in quantum because that's, you know, how when you, when you see, like, the, you know, the electrons pop in and out, the whole thing, that, they go invisible. The fourth dimension is, to me, the dimension of space. The third dimensional grids are circular. That's why you have the flower of life and everything takes two to tango. The, thir- the fourth dimensional grids are the grids of space, the galactic grids. That's why you have all these star seeds and all these galactic walk-ins that are coming in right now because the Earth right now is awakening to become a galactic citizen or a galactic, you know, we're preparing for that as we step into the next root of man. So... The, in, in the, if you are in the third dimension and you are not aligned, then you are, you think maybe that you're working at fourth dimensional space and so you are resisting, resisting, thinking you're in the fourth dimensional space and in, in that you, instead you are persisting. Does that make sense? So like for me, the more I didn't want to know in the third dimension, not realizing I was in the third dimension, the more that I knew. Because what you resist persists. So I was praying all backwards, and I was getting all this information. I kept saying, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. And more information was coming in because in the third, what you resist persists. So that's why it can trip you up. So we, once we begin to understand full mechanics of the third dimension and how to navigate it, um, and the fourth dimension, how to navigate it and how to go up and down between them and then how to slide, with our heart through them, through the plasma of it, then we answer prayers. Mm-hmm. At least that's how I understand it, but you know. <laughs> we just have well. to be very aware of discernment of dimensions because if you, now of course I'm very, I'm speaking to a very specific group though that have heard the calling of global that, you know, uh, that's just, I'm here. I'm a walk-in volunteer here to assist the forerunners. I clear grids. That's why I've been doing all this grid work. But, you know, I'm not, from a, from a, as my, my, my two friends tell me, uh, <laughs> you know, I have no social skills. And, um, <laughs> you know, I'm not very good at human. Human has never made sense to me, and it wasn't until I realized it was because my soul hadn't played in this playground, hadn't experienced it, I didn't know the rules. Now I know the human rules, you know, I, I understand and I can, you know, what what doesn't kill me makes me stronger, but most importantly, you know, I have extreme, extreme, extreme um, experiences, but that's also my grid work. You know, when I experience things in the fourth dimension, the biggest law is what you look at disappears. So you open your third eye so that you can see the third dimension, and then once you step into the fourth, as you begin to discover and as you begin to to um, assimilate and integrate, and you begin to become aware of global issues or of family issues or personal issues, the minute you become aware of something in the fourth dimension, it's gone. And very different in the third. And that's the part that, that's why the fourth dimension is invisible and nobody ever pays attention to it. Because the minute that you say, oh yeah, you know, after three comes four, well then it disappears. Because <laughs> they're space grids. They're trinity grids. The space grids are triangular. Um, you know, because when you do space travel, you have to have vectoring and you, you know, that's how souls come in and out. You got large distances. So different, different in a way, numerical system. Mm, okay. I know, right? Well, there are so many questions that can pop off what you just said there. Uh, <laughs> but you were talking about the global grid work in 5D. Mm-hmm. And so many are, um, we know a lot of people are working on the grids it's and the crystalline grid. grid. So talk mm-hmm. a little bit about that and how we can really anchor in to the crystalline grid and what that means. Yes, what does that mean? Um, well, you know, it, the crystalline grid, the 5D grid, um, different than the space grid of the fourth, what the crystalline grid is, it allows 
for all dimensions up until then to collapse into one. So it allows all those light beings or light entities that are actual crystals. Because, you know, we use crystals mm. to co-heal, uh, for co-healing and co-creating healing. That's why, I, you know, I got tons of crystals. I love my crystals. Because in the fifth dimension, it's real, it's really you have crystals, crystals, crystal, and crystals. So you're incorporating the organic universe and the tesseract or the non-organic universes in the fifth. So we, we, the crystalline grid is the ability to communicate, understand, and together formulate brand new ways of healing our environment and our earth uh, into achieving peace on earth by the use of the plants, the animals, the elements, uh, and the elementals, because all of that has upgraded. Um, everything has Evolved. We're all evolving. All together, dimensions are all rising. And so the crystalline grid, the best way I can tell anybody, if they really, really, truly, if they truly want to do this, then first and foremost, the minute they open their eyes, set the sacred intent that they will do that. And so what does that mean? Well, normally how I do it is I have a television and I have a big picture with a clock because I have no sense of time. So I have to always keep it in front of me. So at, how it started for me is I started waking up because, remember, we have to try a sleep cycle. We wake up at 3.33, 4.44, 5.55, 1.11, 2.22 in the morning. Ha, ha, right? So um, we use those numbers to co-create healing using angel numbers in the fifth dimension. So when I wake up, I get up in front of that TV that has real pretty pictures, and when 555 comes up, I put my hands over my heart, and I set my sacred intent. And I say, I set my sacred intent to walk every moment of every second of every breath that I take in this, in today, for the greater good in love and in light, for peace and for bliss and in peace and in bliss. And so it is. So by setting the sacred intent, it aligns you to the correct grid. Okay. It aligns you to the correct, so it's kind of like you found the back door. Because the key to the to belief and to the Christ and being a Christos or anchoring the Christ, the Christ consciousness Um the key to it is your sacred intent. That's it. People, that's why it's so simple. So you, you wake up and this has to happen the minute you open your eyes so that, your eyes so that you don't kind of wobble off your dimension where you want to be. You know what I'm saying? So first you set your sacred intent so that you, you state to the universe what you're going to do today. Yeah. And then, you know, you, usually a very strong affirmation, I am source, sovereign, free, I am Maria Julia, which is my name. I don't, don't use last names because those are human roles. Your job is to release all your roles so that you can be you. You're not what you've done. You are who you are. And so set your sacred intent. And then visually catch two numbers, your sacred intent. So every time that you look up and you see, oh, it's 555, you know, whenever I see that, I, you know, I scream at all my friends, blessing, you know, and they all think I'm weirdo, but then they all laugh. And what I've really done is I've just anchored that moment with my emotion because in the grid, it's our, it's our emotions that set things in motion. So you first have to set your sacred intent so that you now emotionally have anchored to the Christ consciousness because that's what you're trying to do. And literally, you get on autopilot, and from then on, you let your day unfold with a full understanding that living in the now is today. Today is only two days. One day of sun and one day one day of light and one day of dark. Twenty four hours. That's what really living in the now 
really helps us to understand because you don't need to know what you're going to be doing today, tomorrow if you get yourself killed today because you want anchoring or you want shielding or you want paying attention. This is hard work to, to answer prayers. To say that you are in the five grid and that you are a quantum healer says that you really have to do hard work. And it isn't just, you know, it, it isn't just people saying, well, I'm going to do it, but then they don't do it. So, you know, affirmations, preparations, set your sacred intent. First thing in the morning, your intent to, you know, whatever it is that you wish to do that day, <coughs> use your shielding. Um, you know, when we go down, when I leave my home to go to Publix, to the grocery store or whatever, that's a third dimension. I shield like a crazy nut for me and for them. For me, so that nothing tries to mess with me, so I'm invisible. For them, so that I don't catalyst souls that are out there shopping that are just having a really hard day, and right now they can't handle one more iota of energy coming their way because we've had, you know, solar flares and and cosmic rays and, you know, that, that spiritual cosmic kitchen sink thro thrown energetically at them. So it really takes two, it, it takes total awareness, but um, affirmations, declarations. And then something that nobody ever wants to hear, but it happened to me, so I can only express how it happened to me the next day after my awakening, which is first and foremost, there are timelines in this earth right now for those that wish to express, experience um, dissension. And, and that's, there's, it's, we have free will. Um, you know, um, there are many, many souls that are brand new to this world that have never experienced it. And, of course, we're all divinely guided and protected. So, um, and, and so those things are all going to play out. Because when you are quantum, and our earth really is quickening right now, so we really have everything, we have every age of man, every timeline. We have, you know, we have dinosaurs going to eat us, a comet's going to come, we're all going to freeze, we're all going to, you know, no, it's global warming, no, it's going to be an ice age, no, we got negative aliens, no, we got good aliens, no, we got bad angels, no, we got... You know, it's like I laugh every day and go, oh, my goodness, I have so many ways I could die today because everybody's trying to kill us because they are in the third dimension and what you resist persists. So the more you try to kill us, <laughs> the more you, we activate and are divinely protected and become more freaky deaky and, and do our, our, our sacred, you know, our, uh, our stuff that we were born to do, all our clairs. So it's a funny thing when... When you watch, when you're outside of it and can see that happening, but one of the things that we do need to be very aware of right now that I think is coming through, and if anybody really quickly, quickly, very quickly wants to release, is do not eat anything that has a heart, meaning no animals, no fish, no blood, nothing for at least 30 days, um, so that you can completely release, you know, what I call the the uh, the beast timelines because you know that it, it doesn't change the fact that when enough people believe something the timeline is a possibility we don't it's that's why we independently need to anchor to our ascension timeline our ascension timeline is just one way and that is for every single one that wishes to create wishes to awaken wishes to live in peace on this earth it wants to be on and so, you know, that's that's why it's so important to understand that the time has come and is quickening now where we really are being asked by by another earth and by Father Cosmos and by our brothers and sisters that are awakening um, to really now, in a way, become superheroes, um, really step into our power. And by superheroes, I don't mean that you have to, you know, do freaky deaky. I mean that those that need those tools will have them. But, you know, a superhero to me is anybody that sees somebody crying and just goes up to them and holds them and gives them a hug and never says a word. Because being a superhero is the essence that is from within us. And everybody mm -hmm. wants to be a superhero. We are the superheroes. 
And and the reason no one can save us is because we have to be able to save ourselves in case things change and Mother says, okay, I'm allowing superheroes now. Who wants to go? And any of those that have the skills or whatever, we're all going to raise our hands and volunteer. And the process continues because the incarnation process is the volunteer process. When we come in, as it's from a from a star seed uh, mm-hmm. point, right? We kind of yes. volunteer to come to Earth, and we have to align frequency wise first of all to the planet Earth. Then we volunteer to come in. We have to, uh, and then Mother adopts me, and I I'm actually adopted, which is very interesting for adopted star seeds, and and souls that are adopted in this world are are. Quite possibly, as I'm starting to see sleepers, star seed sleepers, kind of in the matrix, similar to mine. That's why they're adopted. Because otherwise, you have family and you're part of reincarnation. But if you have no one in this earth, then you're adopted by this earth. And I, that's exactly how I feel. I feel that I was adopted by this earth and was chosen as a volunteer. It's a great honor to be here. And then, not only was I gifted the ability to be here at this time with 7.7 other billion souls, but I was gifted the gift to be um, a woman, and I had the heart frequency and gifted the ability to have to give birth to a, a son and a daughter. So, as far as I'm concerned, I I can't I I can never stop working for everything for this piece because the earth adopted me and gifted me motherhood. And this is Mother Earth and this is the Milky Way. And so we need to begin to think of everything as yes, no, because there's always two sides to every story. And then we also need to think of ourselves as being on the other side because we are no longer human. We wouldn't be having this conversation right now because we'd be dead if we were human with everything that's done towards us and because we are hugely evolving into the the next root of man and leaving the Aryan age, the age of mind without heart behind us and an awakening to all of us, to our trifold part, you know, to a heart in our mind, a heart in our heart, and our heart in our body that allows us to anchor to all dimensions and makes us quantum. It's our trifold heart that truly makes us able to answer prayers and be guardian angels because that's really what we are. And um, especially here in the United States, um, there's the, you know the, the this country, the United States, um, carries a great deal of, of responsibility and, and um, spiritual and. Uh, it's spiritual power for the rest of the Americas. The Americas have been greatly, not just in our own country, the American Indians, but our, our indigenous populations in the Americas have been just utterly brought to extinction by by uh, the powers that think they are. So, you know, all of this is happening right now, and I frankly will tell you the truth, and, and uh, this is just my truth, of course, take what you need and leave the rest, but... I thought this quickening that is happening right now was going to take us and was going to happen on 2029. So the fact that I'm at 2019 and things are happening so fast, there's oh, that's so much closure. Yeah, we've cut out like a whole cycle. That's nine years. That's a whole timeline cycle of dissension. We just skipped right over it, collapsed. So I know that that aligns us instead of for 2030. Now we're aligned for 2020. And what Ooh, is excellent. 2020? Yes. Right? Okay. Our consciousness has to align to our numbers. Mm. To. You know, number one at singular truth of energy is going to be everything that that's expressed, whether it's a sound, whether it's music, whether it's an element, whether it's – it doesn't really matter. So, you know, once we are aligned to 2020, we are going to be coming. That's why everybody's coming out. You know, I'm laughing going, everybody's coming out of the spiritual closet. I'm no longer anonymous because we're all, like, getting kicked into play, you know, and we were going to, we were getting popcorn and we're getting ready to watch the show a little, and somehow we missed 
we missed the memo that said things have sped up hugely across the matrix. The mm. third dimensional matrix has completely, completely been just, uh, just it has it has fallen into the void. Yay. Well, that is very promising. That is very promising for those who, you know, there's so many starseeds that are like, ugh, we can't have this happen fast enough. And so we always say, turn off the news. Well, turn off the news. For one thing, we, we like to kind of peek into the 3D. But as soon as we do, like you were saying, we we can get frustrated or we start to take sides or we start to oh. resist, and that persists, we spin out, right? Man. And Stay we out. Chaos, yeah? mm-hmm. we spin out of heart center, and we can't stay center, and we just become right. a tornado, and we just wreck and tear. And I know because you know, I, I have um, when that when we first have an extreme awakening, which is really what's happening now to people everywhere. It's very accelerated. You don't get to walk your whole life and have an awakening now. It's like ah, you got something to do. So, you know, our emotional bodies, there's so much healing, there's so many triggers. Um, and, and I always say now, you know, our new Bible is Netflix, Hulu, Video Prime, uh, because the, remember the crystals in our computers now, in the fifth dimension, are co-creating healing with us. That includes our televisions. So if you set your sacred intent for clarity, you sit in front of a Netflix and you binge on something and cry your eyes out, you've just seen a part of your past life. You've just seen yourself. And because in the fourth dimension, what you look at disappear, and because you set your sacred intent to walk in Christ consciousness and harm none, then you begin to download hugely because our storytellers are all gone and we we are so disconnected. The only thing we really have is the blessing of our computers because we have been isolated and targeted individuals and we have been, you know, gang stopped and we have there are all these programs and that's fine. We don't we we need to become aware of them, but we need to learn to not give any energy and the minute you feel an emotion towards anything, even If it is a positive emotion, if you're in the third or the fourth matrix, you are feeding it. That's Mm -hmm. why you, our job in the fifth is to be completely neutral. We're almost emotionless. The higher we go up in the dimensions, we are in constant peace, as you know. And when you begin to become you know, at those dimensions of peace and of, of you know, the, the frequency of the 900s and of enlightenment and, and, and all of that, when you're anchoring, you know, those frequencies within you and your inner grids, you know, you really are not connected to the earth. You are, you know, you are on the earth but not of it and you are, you know, you're, you, you are connected to all your galactic family, your light family, you know, the birds, the trees, you're talking to the flowers. I mean, you know, you're you're swimming with the ocean and the dolphins. I mean, you're tapping to your Atlantean self, Lemurian self, Hyperborean self, Polarian self, if you've been in the reincarnation process. And so we need to remember that at home, that is our heaven now. And the minute we walk out of our front door, you have gone cute. You've gone multi, and now you need to do all your tools, all the things you've done, to make sure that you are now kind of assimilating and integrating back into the earth to assist. And, as I like to say, answer prayers. And they're not always people. I have had the, the biggest, most horrible experiences I've had with humans that turned on me like the Matrix, you know, on a dime. I was there for their animals. And I didn't, it took a great deal of inner discernment and empathy to realize that it took me years to realize that I was, I thought I was being called to help people. And it was the animals that were calling me. But I was mm-hmm. a baby and a newbie and I didn't understand it. So I was just blasting the human and, and just not a witness, not conscious. I was awake but not conscious and certainly not mastering my tools because I didn't even know I had them. <laughs> so, you know, the star seeds and, and all those right now, they're awakening. And, and I talk earth shaman and star shamans. 
Niku, the, 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 those are all the souls, we're all equals. But we just have different experiences. Everybody's awakening and we are walking our way down from the dimensions because you've had an awakening. That's what people don't understand. They're trying to, to do all, that's why none of the tools that used to use before their awakening work. It's because you have greater tools available to you by combining your old tools. Because in the higher dimensions, you can have up to, you know, just like the mystic arts, we tap into dimensions to, to create in our dimension and tap into those energies. That's why if we see, you know, the number, if we look up and it's 333, that's the energy of the ascended masters. Well, if you say a prayer in that moment, for whatever's on your mind, you tap into at 333 the energy of the ascended masters and you amplify the Christ, the crystals, whatever that is, and you are um, able to um, be of greater service. Um, you know, if you, if you see, that's how you can use numerical angels. If you, it, it, everything is, our outer grids reflect our inner grids at all times. The only thing we have to figure out is whether what's happening is personal or global. If it's personal, then you, then you use you know you you have to do all, everything you need to do to make sure that you are lying and do the right thing and harm none. And if you do harm because of emotional triggers, you need to forgive yourself. You need to pray. You need to ask for clarity, you ask, and you need to ask for courage to accept the truth. Because we can tap, in the fifth dimension, we tap into the virtues. That's the truth of our power, um, is, you know, um, we have faith, we, we, we have love, we have all these different things, and those feelings that is how you how you anchor to a grid. So if I, for example, um, have been um, trying to sell my home, and I've had for the last year and a half, as a matter of fact, obviously not aligned. Uh, what I wanted was not for the greater good, but I kept trying, and it ended up disastrous for me. Um, but but as you finally realize that you have to let go. And if you, even if you move from one room to the other, you've jumped, quantum jumped. 
So if imagine, like for me, you know, um, I, I came from Hilton Head, South Carolina, and I quantum jumped, you know, here in Florida to Daytona. So not only did I quantum jump from my home and my address, which is a timeline, or my city, which is a timeline, or my state, which is a timeline, but I went to a completely different timeline, another state, another city, another home, brand new matrix. And so that's how you know that things are happening in your life is because you are geographically moving. There are physical things that are happening in your life and they're sliding away from you. It's like you just watch things fall from you because we've done all the work. You know, you you mentioned that the convergence of 1987. So I, um, on uh, when I had my my awakening on that day, I immediately tapped and connected to one of my favorite star elders, Dolores Cannon. And I didn't know who she was. I just saw, I just, there was this, um, this, this entity in front of me. And, um, and she had a cannon. And I was like, I had no idea. And I had been working, um, with that entity. And about four years later, all of a sudden, Something came through my desk, and it was a video from Dolores Cannon, and I literally fell out of my chair because I had been I had been somehow connected to her, and had been doing all the things that she has helped us so much with. Because they did the Star Elders did so much work in 1987, and what they did is they set up what I call a backdoor timeline, or let's call it a secret <laughs> secret secret. Sacred timeline, or sacred, let's call it not secret, because that's sacred. Sacred. Let's call it mm-hmm. sacred. Mm-hmm. A sacred timeline where, um, you could, we could jump back to the future, because we had so much timeline interference, right, that the, the reality we were living wasn't what we were meant to live. It had been interfered with by outside forces. So the star elders, the star shamans and the earth shamans all that unified for that convergence, um, that's exactly what they did, and out of it created was this slippery slide, super fast, spontaneous awakening, accelerated awakening timeline that has that caught up, and has finally caught up now. And that's what we're experiencing. That's why that, that, that convergence, that convergence is the reason I was able to have my awakening. Otherwise, I would have died that day. Mm. And that was a knowledge that came to me immediately, like within the first week of my awakening, when I was, yep. you know, being connected. Well, that's, so. that's this journey to, to realize and understand that we, what we know, we know, right? We know yeah. what we know inside of ourselves. And when we remember it, when we go multidimensional like this and have that awakening, we remember it. So all of the answers are always inside of us. Now, mm-hmm. Maria, you help people discover the answers with inside of them. You help them mm-hmm. unravel from the old matrix system, anchor in yes. to the new grids, higher grids, um, figure out how to collapse timelines, what timelines yes. need to be collapsed, and then really how you can help someone become really more multidimensional. And so now would be a perfect time to talk about the personal sessions that you have because this mm-hmm. is unique. Uh, you do yeah. these back to back. So really within about a, what, a 24 hour or maybe a 36 hour period, yeah, that's someone's going to gonna have sessions with you. <laughs> yes. And so tell us about that because that's a powerful transformation. It is. And that, of course, again, please know, I am not more or less than anybody, than any of us. I just have everything in my life is accelerated. So those that wish to accelerate, I can help with that. So the first, the, the reason, the way that the sessions work, um, everything is intuitively. Um, of course, there are learning messages, right, that need to come through. Of course, they always do. That's the easy part. The, the thought, the, the, what, what I do in the first session is help you look at your day to day, your life right now, your life that you're living in that you no longer, that no longer serves you. 
because what you want to do is you want to step into your creator timeline, into the timeline that's going to let you do what you were born to do so you can live your best life now, regardless of what's happening in the world. Because that's really how we're going to bring about peace is by by being the way shows. Because when we feel peace, you know, people see us and they're like, well, how come you're so peaceful? And then maybe you share a little thing with them and help them. So the first part is understanding what's going on in your life that is keeping you from gaining clarity and activating your tri-fold heart so that you can step uh, into your service and in service and also so that so that you can be the happiest, so that you can truly um, upgrade and bring forth all the gifts that are latent and your talents are latent, you know, that, that are asleep within you, so that you can really leave this world better than you found it. That's really what we do. So the first day we we walk through that. I use um, I use divinity cards. I have all different little tools and games and things to help to help now whoever does the session with me to to kind of have the ability to have something to fall back on when everything's going to hell in a handbasket and they're losing it. You know, because we have to quickly align. So the first day will be kind of like an assimilation, integration, and kind of a shakening, kind of what's going on. And then I give you tools that night so that you can do, whether it's my Arcturian declaration or where, or whether it's, you know, your sacred intent prayers or different prayers that I have over the years or um, or maybe I might guide you to a video or I might guide you to very specific music or binaural beats. It doesn't, I'll be guided from within. That night, you will completely leave behind your timeline simply by the fact that I've informed you of ways you can do it. And so that night, you will, before you go to sleep, you'll do, you know, whatever, whatever it's going to be. And then you're going to collapse t- the rest of the timelines and all timelines not based in love, and then the next morning when you wake up, you're going to immediately set your sacred intent, and now you're going to be anchored only to a timeline that has love in it, and that's your ascension timeline. So you've just you've just quantum jumped up to a higher frequency. Now, once you do that, on the second day, I'm going to teach you how to find your time, because... String theory and the holographic universe and quantum physics and quantum mechanics is real. And so every time in your whole life that you chose something and didn't choose something else, an aspect of you, a fractal of you split and went to the other option. So those are all, that's what the, that's what string theory is. So in, when they are aspects of your timeline, we don't have to ascend and descend because you're already in 5D that you only ascend and descend, you only quantum jump when you're moving from third to fourth to fifth through the light body process for going up or through the phoenix process for going down. But if you're in your timeline, you use your heart chakra to slide until you find your 100% winner, winner, chicken dinner timeline. The best of the best of the best. Uh, you know, let's play Rocky music. <laughs> you are the champion. Because once, so, so the first day we get you to jump up and down, and the second day I get you to, to understand how you use quantum slide, do the electric slide. Do the so electric slide. Begin, yeah, so you can begin to meet the right people, to connect to those that are that carry your your passion, so that you can have clarity of mind. So that the the more you have clarity of mind the more that you can then see what your purpose is, because you're clear, the more that you can activate your heart with passion. And in the fifth dimension, emotion set things in motion. And if you are passionate, you are going to just kaboom, ba boom, ba bam, bam. You're going to explode. You're going to be fantastic. You're going to be so happy that people are just going to look at you and go, yeah, she's just happy. <laughs> you're going to make people mad because you're happy. You're going to trigger them, and you're going to keep on happy. happy. And regardless of what happens, you're going to love it because you have passion, because you know your truth of what you are meant to do, and you know that everything else 
it's just a beautiful experience, but it doesn't, you know, it's, it's life, but it doesn't change what you are meant to do. And it, it all ties. Clarity, passion, purpose, the trinity, the new trinity, the new trifold heart, clarity with our heart mind, you know, passion with, with, you know, with our, with our spirit, with our, with our spirit mind, you know, purpose with our body mind, with our body hearts. We really need to begin to realize that one, we've done it. There's no more transitioning. It's done. Two, if you're here in this conversation or if any of this comes to you, you are exactly where I am. You've just been busy doing other things because many of us got called and we had to hold the space in the third dimensional area, whatever that might have been. I've, I've been preparing, believe it or not, for this radio show by going on YouTube and watching on what's happening in the world because I'm my book, I'm always doing quantum physics and that's my thing. So I don't, I don't have any third dimensional knowledge, you know. I had to really educate myself in case that came up because that's what we do. We focus on what we are born to do. And if that's in the third dimension, you're not going to be, you're not going to be worrying about, you know, teleportation and quantum physics like I am. You're going to be worried about whatever it is that you're working on. That's the beauty of all of us. That's why we're a rainbow tribe. That's why it doesn't matter where we came from. It doesn't matter what we did. It doesn't matter what our roles were, our education, our parents, our race, our language. Nothing matters. It's all about our soul. And when we have our spiritual awakening, all 12 of our souls wake up. And if you have a human spiritual awakening, then you remember your Atlantean, your Lemire, and you remember all your lives. If you have a star seed awakening, you remember your lives. They're just not on this planet. <laughs> You still remember them, and you still have to assimilate and integrate. It's not any different. It's just a different experience or perspective. Mm. And that's happened to everybody, and everybody's multidimensional. That's the whole point. We no longer have to go multidimensional. We've all gone multidimensional. We've all quantum jumped. And we're all just, like, bouncing around, you know, in, in the void, trying to anchor to the new Earth, the new symphonic universe, the new matrix, the new everything to anchor in the new golden age. And so as soon as you anchor, then you can begin to, as quickly as possible, understand your purpose, connect to your galactic family, connect to your soul contracts, connect to your ray contracts, connect to everything that is needed to help the Earth grids, if that's your job, of course. Mm-hmm. It's all Beautiful. We, are all we really are. It's yes. just no one knows it because we 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 haven't had a chance to be able to join each other and, and have these kind of conversations as much because we've all been so busy and completely isolated. I mean, I've been a spiritual hermit for eight years. Mm. I mean, as I said, you were integrating, I, right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I was completely taking wow. out my yeah. So beautiful. And so that is so wonderful. You're here as a super multidimensional being, barely playing in the 3D realm. You are really detached from that and helping others to do that as well. Thank you so much for that, Maria. Your special You're offer welcome. is available there. AcousticHealth.com oh, slash special offers slash Maria that will get you to the beautiful offering. Again, those are two sessions that you'll schedule back to back with Maria Benthencourt. Well Maria, thank oh, it's you so one more much. Thing. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'll also do a video answering one of your questions after the last mm. session and post it up anonymously with you, but it'll kinda of be a reminder you can always tap into as well. Go to my YouTube channel. For the people that do their sessions with me, I'll offer a video and that'll be kinda of neat. So Almost yes, like perfect. Thank you so much, Maria. This Thank has been you, just a refreshing <laughs> conversation. Thanks so much for being here. You're welcome. Blessings. Be blessed. Be blessed, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. An anchor to the Creator Timeline. How beautiful. Okay. Yes. Well, now it is time to dance our way to the Cosmic Heart. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy.
quantum conversation and thank you for dancing with us to the cosmic heart as we raise our own vibration we raise the vibration of the planet this show is dedicated to you and all awakening hearts as we are here to shine our bright light and amplify our love access all quantum conversations special offers from our guests and online healing retreats by visiting AcousticHealth.com. I'm Loren Gailey, and from my sacred heart to yours, I honor your magnificent love and light. We leave you now with music from the universe. Music literally created by the universe as musical notes were assigned to mathematical equations. The result is this beautiful music available at AcousticHealth.com. Namaste. Namaste.